Hello, here's my homily for All Saints Day, which is on Sunday the 1st of November. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder if you've met any of the self-appointed Catholics on the internet who seem to spend their time analysing why the Pope or some bishop is wrong about this or that, as if they were the experts on the Catholic faith. Such people do a disservice to the Catholic Church, presenting us apparently squabbling over things that mean nothing to people outside the Church. I'm reminded of a saying of Jesus who said, Oh, you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint, dill and cumin, but have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. Now today we celebrate the thousands and thousands of ordinary Christians who down through the ages have not neglected the weightier matters of the law, doing their best as weak human beings to spread the true faith, using good, wise words and noble actions to bring people closer to God and his church rather than driving them away. In our Gospel from Matthew chapter 5, Jesus describes all sorts of different ways in which people can be saintly. Those who are gentle, those who hunger and thirst for what is right, those who are merciful, those who are pure in heart, those who are peacemakers, and those who are persecuted in the cause of right. It is in people like this that God is at work. And we could all probably add our own ideas of other saintly people. But the main point of this list is that there's not one kind of person in whom God is at work. There are, as our first reading has it from the Apocalypse chapter 7, a huge number, impossible to count, of people from every nation, race, tribe and language. Yes, there are so many different ways of being a saint. The next thing to note about true saints, whether named by the, as saints by the church or just good, quiet Christians, is that they see themselves as part of the church, of a loving family, not trying to stand out and be different, but just aiming to be part of God's faithful people. Even those famous saints we do remember, who did stand out and were different, knew how important it was to be faithful members of the church as well. In our second reading from 1 John chapter 3, we're told to think of the love that the Father has lavished on us. Now note that word, us. I might want to think of the love that God has lavished on me. Indeed, I've met Christians who mistakenly think their own hotline to God is the most important thing in the world. But that's not what this text and so many other texts in the Bible says. Now, I don't want to deny the validity of those who claim a close and individual relationship with God. But sadly, I've noticed that sometimes it is this that becomes more important for them than being a loyal member of God's family. I knew a very devout Protestant Christian once who was dissatisfied with his church, so he encouraged a group to follow him and found their own church. But after a bit, he became dissatisfied with them and decided to be a Christian all by himself. It was so sad that he could not see that we Christians are called to serve one another and the wider world, rather than seeking our own spiritual peace. The Church of the Saints may be glorious in heaven, but meanwhile saints have to put up with the less than perfect church on earth. Indeed, this is one of the principal differences between Protestant and Catholic Christians. For Catholics, the heart of being a Christian is being at Mass, Sunday by Sunday, whether it feels good or not, simply because this is what Jesus told us to do when he took the bread and wine at his Last Supper with his disciples and said, this is my body, do this in memory of me. Our being there is the important thing, and we need to remember that we go to Mass for God, which means that even if we're not too keen on the priest or on some other people there, we are still sure that God is there. What's more, we also may not be very good Christians ourselves. Our faith may be shaky and our ideas about God a bit muddled, 
but we offer our lives to God in and through Jesus. And that's what matters. Let me remind you of a very important prayer that the priest says just before communion. He says, Lord Jesus Christ, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity. This is such an important point, important thing for us all to remember, but it's particularly important for those who've either stopped going to Mass or who say they're going to start, stop because, as they say, they don't get anything out of it. When they tell me this, I say, but you're not meant to get anything out of it. You're meant to offer yourself into it, to offer your presence and your prayer for all those in the church with you, good or bad or somewhere in between, and to offer yourselves in service to the world. I go on to say rather brutally, I'm afraid, look, Jesus didn't get anything out of hanging on the cross, did he? Why should you expect to follow him and find it easy? In the end, <clears throat> it is this faithful following of Jesus, however hard it may be, that makes us saints. And yes, I mean us, because we are all, as St Paul says to the Christians in Rome, called to be saints. That's Romans chapter 1. In fact, Paul doesn't just say they and we are called to be saints, for later in that letter, he actually tells them that they are saints. He does this in one of my favourite passages in the Bible, Romans chapter 8, especially verses 26 to 39. Here he talks about how weak we are and how hard it can sometimes be to pray as we ought. And then he tells them, and they're for us, that when we do not know how to pray as we ought, the Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words, and God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit. And then comes the crucial bit for today, for he says of us weak, struggling Christians who find it hard to pray that we are saints. And this is not because of some holy thing that we've said or done, but simply because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. He could have written, the Spirit intercedes for you, but he chooses to call them, and so us, saints, anticipating for them the glory that is to come as he moves on to his wonderful climax. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes, it is when in our weakness we open ourselves up to God that we are saints. May God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.